And I saw on your LinkedIn that you're a volunteer fireman or you used to be a board, boardman or selectman. A um, couple different things. So yeah, I was a volunteer fireman for 15 years. I was active hmm. and uh, I'm getting up there now, but I started doing that when I was in high school, when I was 18. So I did that for about 15 years and I kind of trailed off um, when I met my wife. And uh, just that point in my life, I had put in so much time and I was so active because it really takes up a lot of your life. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, but it was so fulfilling. And it's like when you do anything like that and you're volunteering your time and you expect nothing in return, like you're just out there to help people and help the community. For me, it was, it was rewarding and it was fun. I mean, you know, with, you know going, going into a building that's on fire, uh, for me, it was fun. That might not be true for everybody. Right. Uh, the uh, the other thing that I, I transitioned to, which much later in, in, in life, like, which was more or less the past six years, um, was becoming more active in the politics in the town um, that I was living in at the time. And it just sort of happened because I became passionate about some of the issues that were going on, mm-hmm. um, high density housing and all these things that, that affect so many towns um, in the Northeast. Uh, so I, I kind of fell into it and I'm not a politician. I just happen to be passionate about stuff. So, um, you know, like business, like anything that I've thrown myself into, if I'm passionate about it, all of a sudden I start putting a lot of time into it and I start um, getting a lot of attention. So, you know, long story short, I ended up running two people's campaigns in my town that ran for council and I, they both won, which got me a lot of attention. Coming from nowhere, I had no political background whatsoever. I came out of, out of literally out of nowhere. Uh, so that, of course, got me the recognition and the thanks I got, which I say like tongue in cheek, was I got appointed to be uh, a commissioner on something called the Zoning Board of Adjustment, which in, in most towns and cities, those are the people that you have to go before uh, if you want to make a change to, uh, to anything, to a, a piece of land or to a, um, a property. And uh, it's an interesting thing. So I did that for, I sat, in, I sat for two terms. Um, but I continued to be uh, involved in politics in the town. And ultimately I ended up becoming the vice chair of, I'm not going to say which party, but the party um, in the town and was basically second behind um, the mayor in terms of, of uh, you know, political um, hierarchy, so to speak, in, in, within the party. Um, it just happened because I worked, I worked hard. I put a lot of time in, got recognition. And the funny thing is I never had an interest in being out front. Like right. I didn't want to run for office and, and be elected at all. I, I wanted to be, I think you have more impact when you're behind the scenes and you're mm-hmm. really helping to decide who's going to run for office, helping to get them elected, helping them to raise money. If you believe in those people and that they're, they're going to do the right thing. To me, it's more um, satisfying than being the one running. So long answer right. to your question, but that's what I, I was pretty heavily involved in. And when I moved to, um, to Florida, which is where my primary residence is now, I had the opportunity to actually step into a, a vacant seat um, at a higher level here. And I just said, you know what? I did it for six years. It took up way too much of my life and uh, I'll pass. Right. I love how you bring that enthusiasm in your leadership skills to whatever role that you want to play. It, uh, it, it's just who I am. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it kind of, it kind of, wherever I end up, you know, putting my, putting my energy, it, 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 you're right. It kind of just plays out that way. It's, um, I think for, for, for people who are leaders or who are in leadership roles or positions, um, it tends to be that that just happens organically. Like if you're just wired that way and maybe more so than even being wired that way, like if you continue to evolve and you're, you're really like growing and expanding, mm-hmm. that sort of just happens. You're ready to roll up your sleeves in whatever yeah. situation. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. It's like, how, how do you end up being a leader who's in a leadership position who's successful without having that quality. Right. It happens. But I think that you see those are the, the stories you hear that aren't such great stories. I mean, somebody might have made it, quote unquote. Maybe they aren't the nicest person or maybe they're not so well liked or maybe they're leading with an iron fist, so to speak. I think that's the expression. It's not my style. You know, it used to be actually before I, I, I kind of matured as a business person and as a, as a man. Mm. But it doesn't work. It's um, You got to be real. You got to be authentic. And you really have to just be who you are and everything that you're doing. It worked for as, me. I mean, and as you showed, you have that self-awareness to be able to, to bring it down a level when you go home and to change that role consciously. I can say that now. <laughs> yeah. We'll ask your kids. Uh, it's, uh, I, I would tell you that for... I've been in business for uh, since about 
since about 2010 on my own with this company. But even before that, I had high level um, executive positions in other companies. It wasn't always the case. And what, one of the things I learned is, which I, unfortunately it took me till about two years ago to really, really get it, is the idea that priorities are very important. And I, I had put making it, I had put success um, ahead of family for, for, for a very long time. And I will tell you that it has an impact on your family. Mm. And it, it could be different for everybody, but um, it was like about two years ago that I realized, wait, those priorities are backwards. Like family comes first. And when you're balancing it all, it's hard to balance work or building a business or being whatever successful means for you with a family. Um, it's because it's hard to put one in front of the other. I mean, the reality, your family by, no, there's no question is number one, but if you don't, you know, prioritize and balance work, your family is impacted. Right. So it was about, it was about two years ago that I realized, wow, I had my priorities backwards and I was missing too much. I was missing, I was, while I was there for all of my kids events, I was getting home at eight o'clock every night. I was working every weekend because I was trying to build this thing that we've got now. Yeah. Um, if I had to do it again, I'd probably do it the same because I've made a million mistakes. I failed tremendously along the way. And uh, it got me to the point that I'm at now where, which is like, okay, family is more important. And I don't put that before um, anything at all anymore. Uh, but it takes some real serious things happening in life, in your life to be like, whoa, what the heck was I thinking? The politics, you know, other people's things that were important to them, um, work, networking events, like all this stuff was like, to some means to some end, but there's never an end really. Like what's the goal to make as much money as you can. All right. I have enough money. Like it's uncomfortable. There's no end to that. Right. right. So maybe it's just going through midlife or something, but I, I really realized about two years ago, like I got this backwards and in the past year totally transformed my, my, my own life and switched it around. And the funny thing is work and business are more rewarding and I'm a thousand times happier now than I ever was when I had it switched the other way around. Hmm. Makes sense? Yep. So there's a lot of, a lot of information there, but it, it made me think with that question. No, I like that. The, you know, we're talking about roles and, and priorities and, and I love that. And even with the, you know, this podcast being all the hats we wear that I talk a lot about different roles and switching out. And as a time management coach, I talk a lot about that, but I've been thinking about how we have all these different roles and hats we wear, but also there is that middle part. Like if it's, if you're thinking like a, uh, a center with a bunch of extensions going out of it, you know, you can choose to go work on the family. You can do the, this, but it's coming from that one space of you as a person. You know, I, I really think that we're, we're, we're a person before we're all these other things, a dad and a husband and a friend. Have you thought of anything like that with, uh, in terms of prioritizing and how do you, you know, you said that family, of course, is the first, um, but you also need the business. You need it all. There's one piece missing. And the piece, which is where I, I had this sort of transformation over the past few years, um, is this like, what's the, it's like, an, uh, it's like a self-awareness. It's a mindfulness, mm -hmm. right? And it's, the truth is, as I, this might get too, uh, too hokey for you, but the truth is that you have to be happy inside yourself. It's like, it's, it's a soul thing. And I'm not talking religion or I'm talking being happy inside yourself, in your soul, being at peace, being content and knowing that the truthfully, the most important thing is happiness. And that only can start and end inside your own heart. 